Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Lore Cave. In today's episode, we're covering a very important part of what makes MDOD and its world of Valencia tick. The three separate forms of magic, judgment, creation, and soul magic. And how they are used and what do they do? So, sit back, grab your popcorn and hot cocoa, and let's discuss the magic which inhabits the stories and worlds of Valencia. Make sure to join the Discord and subscribe for more! Woo! <laughs> Differentiating the three types. The three separate magic types in MDOT are all slightly confusing to the unknowing onlooker. And as such, the easiest way to understand them is to understand what causes each of them and why they work. Think of judgment magic as an acting force that does things because the force is made. Creation magic is the intrinsic natural state of things and their bonding energies, and soul magic is the wills and desires of those who can use it. Judgment magic further breaks down into six separate forms of elemental likenesses of light, dark, fire, earth, water, and air, which all pool from the same set of the runic language which controls and activates judgment magic with a certain dedicated fuel source. Creation magic breaks down into 150 essences, the bonding forces between atoms and molecules in a substance, and the space between everything, making it a binding force and a constant that is required for all things to exist. Soul magic also has a few distinctions, but mostly in the way it's been harnessed. Cavaliers like Urkole from my Depths of the Blighted Heart series, coming off of hiatus soon by the way, is a living cavalier with his armistice, Bad Apple, which is a representation of his soul's wills and desires. This can be converted when a cavalier gives his power into a similar form to an organ donation, which then converts the cavalier into completely cavalieric energy, along with their soul. Likewise, soul harvester type spells, like what some cultists have been able to perform, also fall into a different type of soul magic, but in a very vague sense. In terms of ruling and freeness to use, judgment is the most solid and rule-driven type of magic. Creation is limited in terms of inputs and therefore rules, but is expansive and infinite in its workings, with laws allowing control over the output. Soul magic is the most freeform, but also the hardest to use and least likely to be accessible, as only a select few people can conjure and use soul magic. Judgment Magic Judgment Magic is by far the easiest to use but hardest to master magic classification of the three magic types in Alenciae. Its simplicity is in its rule set, as long as you have the proper fuel, correct incantation, and proper control of the spells or runes you are casting, the spell will be cast no matter what. Improper fuel, however, can kill the caster. Improper control of the spell may lead to further self-harm or miscasting spells on those surrounding, and incorrect incantations may cause the other two problems. These simple rules are what shapes most of Alencia's magic working, as the abundance of judgment magic provided by the seven dragon gods flowing throughout the world makes its material malleable to the rules of judgment magic. And, due to the fact that anyone can use it, most nations in Alencia have in fact militarized it, and those with the means to learn it as self-defense can easily do so with arcane schools and the likes. However, it isn't just used for defense, it's also used in engineering in tandem with other magic, to make roads between towns speed up the horses and people who trod them, to make clock towers citywide spectacles and exhibitions of the town's history, and make markets a warm and cozy place that welcomes their guests to fine trading. The limits of judgment magic are explored more and more each day, as its laws tamper with the rules of Valencia itself, and those rules allow for much play to occur within Judgment's allowance. Judgment magic is normally classified into six elements. However, the blending and variation of them allows for a large mass of hidden elements that blend or invert or further classify the basic elements. The basic six elements are fire, earth, air, water, light, and dark. The mixture of the first four is known as a grand classification of the majority of magic, known as anima, 
which is what most judgment magic falls under. The inverse of each of these is known as lightning, sand, cloud, rain, absolution, and decay, with the collection of the first four of those being known as Vita magic, which commonly classifies living targets and their energies, and is mostly used by those who wish to delve deeper into arcana than what anima may bring. Within each of these, there are tons of blending, variation, and styles used, which are all called upon and written about in the histories of Lincea with proper use. These spells, however, all use their own innate language of spellcasting, known in Lincea simply as runic. Runic, however, is a slightly complex system, with its Salah being one that commonly makes hard-to-speak words and requires a certain canter to it. Runic makes every syllable start with a vowel sound in some way or another, it makes every word be broken up by spelling into two letter syllables, which are then spoken. However, this isn't the entire truth of it, as that alone would break on many words. If the two letter syllable would start with a consonant, like many syllables do, instead becomes a Y consonant combo, in which a Y is inserted right before the consonant, and acts as a vowel instead. In the case of fire, it becomes if ire, wind becomes il inyid, and midnight becomes im id in ig iyit. This allows for the runic version of any word to be used in spells, as long as you can speak it properly, I can't sometimes, and as long as you can write the runes of a language, you may use them to mark either the fuel of the spell or chain the runes to form full incantations and engineered effect, bringing forth the marvels of Lincea's world. Judgment magic intermingles well with creation magic, however cannot be used as a substitute for it. Judgment magic can guide creation, informing it what to do in alchemy or use to draw out certain aspects of a weapon's creation magic via a process known as enchanting. However, it itself is 100% incompatible with that of creation magic, as the laws of something are not the something themselves. Judgment also requires some form of creation magic as sacrifice for itself, as the proper fuel mentioned prior leading it to slowly drain on creation throughout time. However, powerful mages of the highest degree with a powerful soul can instead use their judgment magic to draw on their soul's magic instead, draining it from themselves if they so desire. Soul magic being used in judgment magic is that form of different fueling for spells, where in guiding one's own will within the laws of judgment, one can judge their own souls to produce spells. This is a very dangerous task, however, and mages too weak to do so or with no latent access to the power of their souls are either unable to do this or are highly susceptible to mana drain and their life essences snuffing out. Or, in simpler terms, death. Rune speakers, or very particular mages with access to their own pools of soul magic, commonly can use their souls in place of fuel up to a limited amount of times per day, assuming they have the power to do so. Creation Magic Creation magic is in many ways different yet similar to that of Judgment, with an extensive literature of usage and possible capabilities. However, instead of being the rules for the universe, it's what makes up the universe's matter and elements beyond the likes of the periodic table. Creation magic mainly focuses on the essences of things, and what those essences, when combined, may produce, leading to those creatively in tune to the world to produce many alchemical and unique effects from these essences. Creatively attuned people were only discovered in Alencia recently, and a rise in this magic occurred after the creator's resurrection from Alabaster and return to the Astral Gate at the center of the Draken Isles, most likely correlating to the creator's natural resonance with the creation of the universe. Those who are creatively attuned find it as a natural occurrence to them, and working to master it becomes much of their life's work, all of them looking to attain some achievement that many set for themselves. Its limits are well known, but godly and inhuman, requiring lifetimes to achieve and not workable by one man or woman alone. And as such, the limits are less of what's possible, but what one can do with the time allotted. 
Using creation magic, one could start from a town-sized pile of dirt and work until they have a machine that would produce that same pile of dirt an infinite amount of times over from the raw essence of the materials within it. There are 150 basic essences that form all of creation magic's forms and shapes, which include one of each and every of the 118 periodic table elements, the essence of antimatter, known as null, one for each of the elements of judgment magic and their inverses, one for each of the weapon types in MDOD, which are blades, axes, polearms, ranged, stealth, and even the armor types, which are classified under shields. One for each of the nine important stats in MDOD of health, attack, defense, resistance, dodge, speed, luck, skill, and movement. And an essence of non existent elements, other than antimatter, known as the essence of error. An essence of space time, and finally, an amalgam known as the essence of everything. These essences can be combined in an item combination of eight items around an alchemic circle to create anything, and with subdividing and instructing the creation magic, it can create literally anything and is everything. There's only one spell to truly cast with creation magic, and that is end magic. A spell which is innately known by all the creatively attuned that draws out the creation magic in an object or set of objects in a container or alchemic circle to enact an alchemic recipe, which is how alchemists craft their tools and special items such as skill scrolls, potions, and the like. The greatest of alchemists known to Alencier so far has been Thogar III, who has made both of the infinite Aeon converters in existence an alchemical tool and weapon capable of anything and everything, and furthermore, large-scale creation rather quickly, and is currently working with the soul magic of Cavaliers to make Cavalieric energy to replace the old demonic energy systems he and his brother had made under Alabaster's tempting before the Dark Moon War. And with that energy is helping supply material and the means to create more of this power supply and its connections throughout the world. His intent is to help usher in a new era under Cavalieric energy that will permanently sustain itself and never need refueled under any circumstance ever, due to the creation and judgment magic involved with the creation of a Cavalieric energy generator, which can upkeep and provide indefinitely for the soul of a Cavalier who dedicates themselves to the generator. The only requirement beyond the large-scale research and design requirements that Thargar has noticed is that of a soul magic user. Soul magic. Soul magic is the most unique of all th the three types of magic in Alencia, and this is due to the fact that soul magic functions on the wills and desires of those who wield it. Soul magic is something that can't be learned unless its wielder is naturally strong-willed and has a large pool of soul magic to draw from within themselves. The name of soul magic itself tells you where the fuel comes from, the user's soul. However, it doesn't really burn this fuel, rather it uses this as a power limiter and as a statement of what limits that their soul magic can achieve. Cavaliers use soul magic to manifest weapons from their soul to fight, or tools to help them do any job they need. Cavaliers, which is the common name for people who can use soul magic by the way, are very rare, and it's only recently that they've been discovered as well, due to the fact that souls and their power have only been discovered since right before the Dark Moon War. As it was harnessed and discussed, Cavaliers were found, leading to what would be known as Cavalieric Energy to be discovered after the Dark Moon War and refinement of the old chain bases to not be giant wells of, well, demon souls eating away and corrupting people nearby. As such, since its discovery, soul magic has been a beneficial force helping the world of Valencia to the highest degree. Soul magic is truly something that as long as the Cavalier has enough power, they can truly do anything they'd like with it. This is one of the major concepts of Cavalieric energy reactors, which work by siphoning as much power from a judgment magic set of runes running on an alchemy reaction to create arcane coal, 
on loop from the Cavalier's power, which in turn from the overly efficient Arcane Coal will allow for an infinite loop of production and burning with an excess which goes towards providing for the soul of the Cavalier and any power uses they need to provide to the city they are fueling. In a way, it's a very slight break of the laws of thermodynamics, however as stated prior with Judgment Magic, this is viable and allowed within Alencia's knowledge. A Cavalier can only provide for about a city as power after it's been fully converted to just being a soul to power its generator, which has led to technology being built much smaller than the days of the Darkman War, which had its eight chain bases providing for the whole world. Soul magic and its concepts have been a major study of alchemists due to its power, leading to Thogar III to discover the aforementioned Cavaleric Energy, and develop the ways in which Cavaliers can be harnessed to provide for a town as energy. It sounds like something that would hurt the Cavalier, or even be worse than the demonic energy done prior throughout Alencia. However, due to the nature of Cavaleric energy and soul magic as a whole, it wouldn't be viable if the Cavalier didn't want to do it. Commonly, generators are built for Cavaliers after they are reaching the end of their lifetimes, and are old enough to be near dying. Those who do are only built a generator if they wish to provide for the city. Otherwise, due to the ruling of the alchemists and the colored ways, the construction of a Cavalieric energy generator is considered illegal. If they are, they enter the central chamber at a time of their choosing, and the runes let the soul separate itself from the body, and give it an inhabitable space in the central tank of the generator and pipes of it. This also keeps the Cavalier sentient, meaning they commonly can discuss with those working around the converter, see the areas and landscapes around the pipes and center, and experience the changes of life throughout time. Cavaliers who became a generator become very well revered and memorialized, commonly given a celebrated day within the town or being held with high respect by the locals, with their families being given the highest respect and honors with royalty or leaders of the city for the rest of the lineage's existence. Of course, cavaliers are still being studied, so the length of the life of generators or their souls are still to be determined. However, the focus has been made such that cavaliers within a generator uh, is given the nicest life possible. Companionship, life, and enjoyment is what differentiates the concept from being an evil torture chamber. It's viewed as a massive undertaking and brings respect to the Cavalier, making it understood as not something for every Cavalier in existence. Only those willing to make the ultimate sacrifice to provide for the life of a city are ever allowed to even become a generator, and under that circumstance, they are given the best life imaginable for them. With that, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and like to see more, down in the description is not only going to be a playlist for the series, but a playlist for the music once it's out, and a playlist for the campaign I'm running on this channel, Depths of the Blighted Heart. If you'd like to help or just contribute to the ideas of MDOD, fan art is always welcome and appreciated in the Discord server, also seen below. Leave a comment for any lore you'd like to see covered in the future, or if you're confused about something. I always try to respond to all the comments on every video, so if you would like to know more, ask me there in my Discord. Have a good one. Bye-bye! Depths of the Blighted Heart returns soon. See you there!